Hi, welcome to New Electromagnetism Applications number five. This is the physics software validation. Uh, I forgot if I called it physics with one X or two. I think it's two Zs. I have to go back and double check that. This is the continuation of the railgun project. In order to tinker with railgun and other devices that are being demonstrated in the New Electromagnetism Application series, it would be helpful to have some software to compute the interactions between simple things like wires and magnets. Um, I have a name for this software, physics. Okay, the present state of physics is just a couple of C-sharp classes that I can pull into an application. It's like a little railgun study and it computes simple things. It's going to evolve and eventually hopefully become an application with its own user interface. Okay, so, so what I've done is I pulled these into just a simple C-sharp Windows application and I've got some where I can click the button and it'll give me the answers to a few simple problems I'm working on right now. The important one for this video is the math check because what we need to do is verify that this software gives the right answer. So what I have here is from the railgun we have a length of conductor or, which would be the filament or the edge current of a magnet or the rail of a rail railgun and then the armature we have a gap and the height and this would be the length I forgot to put that in there hope you can see it from the magnet but these are the uh, variables going in and it's basically this there's a simple filament class that you instantiate for the armature and we're showing the armature goes from from 0 G 0 Y is G to 0 H zero. So in other words, that's just a simple line that goes in y at, z at x equals zero and z equals zero, but it goes from y equals g to h. And the current that's in that loop is the armature current, which we're using 10 amps. Okay, then you have the rail, or which in this case would be the edge current of a magnet. Okay, and it goes from the origin, zero, 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 to x equal l, y and z equals zero. So it's just a, a wire of a uh, length L starting at the origin and it's got the current of the rail which is we're using one of the edge currents of the magnets 14,400 amps. Okay so anyway then we go click on this button which is basically the button handler for this or this is the button handler for that and we get an answer I hope you can see it it says 46.3 milli newtons is acting on the armature. 43.6 milli newtons. So we have to validate the usefulness for one to validate that that answer is a correct answer so that we're making sure that there's no uh, error in the coding and that the numerical algorithms properly reflect new electromagnetism. And then the next video we're going to do a physical experiment involving uh, actual magnet, loop of wire, current source, and a force sensor. I'm done with all this. I'm still working on the force sensor. That should be done in two weeks. And then this little tabletop experiment will validate that the software and the new are useful at the predicting what we see in reality, allowing us to simulate various railgun designs before we actually select a design and build it. So this is going to be a long, boring process right now where we're actually going to derive the equation for this system using the second term of new electromagnetism. Okay, so bear with me. The reason why I do this is so people can follow along and they can see that it's really not that hard to use new electromagnetism and we don't have to use the simplifications that they used in the wiki derivation and if you look at other derivations they always end up resort resorting to a math solving algorithm to get results uh, because when you try to use classical theory typically the, it's too cumbersome, that two-stage process is way too cumbersome to do by hand. Um, and I'll show you, this is pretty straightforward. It's, it's, stuff is, well, I'll show you. First thing we do with new electromagnetism, any of them, we're applying them to filamentary currents, is we have to take them from point charge form into wire fragment forms. And what you do there is you replace the Q, V with the I, D, L, where the V is a vector, and the differential length is a vector. And that's here what we did. The next, we're going to assign the armature as the target and the rail as the source. And that means just basically swapping out the 
uh, R for S and A for T, or the other way around. Okay, and this is just bringing this equation over here, just copying it in. And what we're going to do is since the rails are on X, we're going to parameterize the rails along X, and then we're going to parameterize the armature along Y, because the armature is along Y. And so the position of a differential length of the armature at any point in Y is 0, Y, 0. And the position of a differential length of the rail is at X, 0, 0. That's a vector. So let's determine the other vector components. R is the subtraction of the position of the target minus the source, or the armature minus the rail. So we subtract those, we end up with this. And the magnitude of R is just the distance equation for these, which works out to that. And the direction vector for R is R divided by the magnitude, which is this. Okay, and the, the directions of the, di the differential length and their direction is the dy for the armature and dx for the rail. So now we're going to take all of these things and dump them back into this equation. And that's what it looks like when you dump all of those things into this equation. And the first thing we're going to do is pull this guy out because he's, he's basically a scalar so we can pull him out and combine him here. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is, is resolve the dot product here, which is 0 times minus x is 0, 0 times 0 is 0, but dy times y comes out. Okay, and then the next step, we're going to just multiply through, and that's what we're left with. Now we're going to substitute the integration limits. The rail is going to be integrated from x equals 0 to L. The armature is going to be integrated from y equals g to h. That's all we're doing for that. Now, the first I chose to integrate, I f chose to first integrate with y, because this is a double integral. You've got to integrate with x and then y, or y or the next. The order doesn't really matter here. Uh, I chose to do integrate y, and what I have on page 159 of the chemi Chemical Rubber Bible, uh, the, the, the form 159 and page 422 is what I use. That form has been copied here. I do believe there is a plus minus here that I forgot, but that's okay. And so when we substitute this form into this, we end up with this, and we substitute the limits. Okay, this is just copying it back. Now we substitute the limits, h minus g. Okay, now we have to integrate with x. And we're using form 150 on page 422. This is form 150 on page 122, uh, 422. Okay, copying it down, just copying the other guy before. And now we're substituting. And now we substitute the limits, L and 0. And now we reduce. Now, I could have probably reduced this further, but I'm like, eh. I haven't got all day to make it nice. We've got it small enough that we can just pop the numbers in and see what answer we get which is our goal here, is not to come up with the most simple form. Copying it back down and replacing it with all the parameters that were in the software and reducing, reducing, and bada bing, bada boom. We get 46 milli newtons. Okay, and remember the software gave 46 milli newtons. But if we do the error analysis where we take the software subtract the um, analytical uh, value and then take that value and divide by the analytical value multiply by 100 it says we're only off by 0 0.013 percent that's excellent agreement for a numerical integration and a hand integration that's excellent uh, and it's you're very useful to us because it's far beyond the two percent budget we're allowing ourselves for measurement error so there's no way with the instruments are only going to be accurate to 2% that we're going to see the 0.13% error from the software. So we're in good shape here. So let's do a comparison between the previous video. If we use the wiki equation from the previous video for this geometry, not using magnets, of course, just using the, the example in the previous one, we just had 100 amps for the rail and 100 amps for the armature. Okay, but we substitute the same values, we, the equivalent values we used here. We end up with 3.2 newtons. 
I'm sorry, 3.2 millinewtons. But in the new electromagnetism result, we only computed the current for one half of one rail. In other words, we computed for this rail acting on the armature. We still have to compute for the current coming before. Because remember, because remember that magnets have current all the way around, whereas in the classic rail design, the current is only before the rail. In the magnets, the current's there all the time, and it's in front and back on both rails. And so when we did the calculation, we only computed for one rail against the armature. So we really have four sets of currents that are acting on the armature for a factor of two. And because we're going to have a magnet on the top and a magnet on the bottom, there's another factor of two. So we should have four times two. Oh, OK. Four gives 184, and then the two magnets gives two again. So our total effective newtons that we're going to get for just a 10 amp juice through the armature is going to be 368 millinewtons. So if we compare 368 millinewtons to the 3.2 millinewtons of the classical way of doing things, we already have an improvement of 115 times. Okay, so that's approximately 100 times the force for one tenth the applied current for an improvement in efficiency of a factor of a thousand. How about them apples? Okay, so then thank you. The next step is to make an actual force measurement to see if this is reality or fantasy. Okay, we've got to do this. This is what you do in engineering to make is you never trust your models. Only physicists trust their models without question. Engineers don't. Okay, and the first edition of this physics software will be made available at the successful completion of the Railgun project.